Hi everybody, welcome to the Jada and Stitches show and welcome to part one of the 2019 folk art calendar blanket. This year's calendar blanket project differs from previous years in that rather than build the whole blanket a little piece at a time, we are going to build the entire blanket canvas up front to begin with and then each month as we progress through the year we are going to add on to our blanket in order to create a beautiful work of art for each of us. In today's video, I'm going to show you the first two and a half color sections that make up the main five blocks in our canvas. So we're going to work the first two and a half color sections today, and then we'll get to the other two and a half sections in a little bit. From the bottom up, that's what this looks like so far. So your dark blue is on the bottom, followed by a strip of brown, and now we've worked half of the dark green section today as well. Some of you were asking about color substitutions in the comments of the previous video, and if you wanted to substitute black in for the brown, that's perfectly all right. And like we said, if your colors are a little bit different, it's okay, but we thought you might want to see how these color sections work together before you decide on color substitutions for your blanket. This is a folk art landscape of sorts. And if you're familiar with folk art, you know that colors are all over the place. You can use any kind of colors you want, which is why we said you can certainly substitute in different colors if you like. But since this is a landscape, you might want to keep that in mind when you're choosing colors for it, which is why we showed you the two different shades of blue, the two different shades of green, and the brown in the last video we made. Now, we know everybody crochets at a different speed. We all have different allotments of time to work on our favorite hobby, so do not feel you have to rush through this part of the blanket. We have the whole year ahead of us. So if it takes you a little while to build the main canvas of the blanket, don't feel you're getting left behind. No one's getting left behind. We know that a lot of you like to jump ahead. So that's why we're showing you the first two and a half color sections today, but please feel free to take your time as you work through the canvas build of this year's blanket. So let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, head on over to the craft table, and we will begin to stitch up the 2019 Folk Art Calendar Blanket together. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. To begin our 2019 calendar blanket, the first half of our canvas, you want to have your dark blue, your dark green, and your brown yarns. Approximately 200 grams or 364 yards of each color. I'm using a 100% acrylic yarn. This is a size 4 or medium worsted weight. Doesn't matter what brands, I'm actually mixing mine up here. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, the hook we're using throughout this project is a 5.5 millimeter, or an I, or a 9 in the US, also known as a size 5 in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to click that button and the bell so you don't miss the next episode of our 2019 calendar blanket. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to be working back and forth, so back and forth, left to right, right to left, <laughs> as we build this blanket. So we're going to begin with our dark blue color. We're going to start with a slip knot, and we're going to chain 110, 110 chains to begin. Once you have 110 chains, make sure that they're not twisted, although it's okay as we work across, you can sort of untwist them if your foundation chain row tends to want to turn on you. We're going to find the first three and skip them. Find the fourth chain from the hook and double crochet into it. So the three chains that we've skipped count as a double crochet. So when you double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, you have something that looks like that. That chain three on the end will count as a double crochet, and the chain three on the end of every row will count as a double crochet throughout. You're going to double crochet into each stitch. So each chain Double crochet into every single chain all the way back to the beginning and at the end of row one you will have, including your chain three, 108 stitches. At the end of row one you should have 108 stitches. So if you want to take a moment to count them up, 
count them all the way across. Remember that you're including your chain three on the end as a double crochet. So this counts as stitch number 108. Every single row throughout this canvas build will have 108 stitches in it. Every row begins with a chain three. Turn your work. That chain three will count as a double crochet and since it counts as a double crochet, this stitch right here, the one I have my thumb on, that stitch is already accounted for because this chain three acting as a double crochet sits on top of it. So you don't work your first double crochet into that stitch, you always work it into the next stitch. So this one right here. So this is how every single row is going to start when we're using the double crochet stitch. You chain three to turn, it counts as a double crochet, don't use that stitch that it sits on top of. Instead, work your first real double crochet into the stitch next to it. Double crochet all the way across, and make sure you double crochet into the top of the chain three at the end. I'll catch up with you there so you can see what it looks like. And you'll still have 108 stitches in row two. When you get to the end of the row, remember that the chain three from the previous row the turning chains counts the double crochet. So you want to work your 108th stitch into the top of that turning chain or that chain three. So don't miss the turning chains. You always work your last stitch into the top of them because that's, will, that will ensure that you still have 108 stitches in each row. So take a moment if you need to, count them up. You should still have 108 stitches in this row. That's the end of row two. And there's your turning chain at the beginning of row two, when you get back across row three, you'll work your last double crochet into the top of it. So if you have trouble kind of keeping track of that, because maybe you're new to crochet, or maybe your stitches are a little loose, be sure to count. So it's good to count at the end of every row to make sure that your stitch count doesn't go off. 108 stitches in every single row. Every row begins with a chain three. We turn our work. We work the first real double crochet into the next stitch, not this one because it's already spoken for, so into the next stitch. Double crochet all the way across. Make sure you double crochet into the top of the chain three from the previous row. And in total, we want 20 rows of this lovely dark blue. So we're on row three. I'm going to let you guys work back and forth until the end of row 20, and then we're going to change colors. Okay, that is 20 rows of the dark blue. Every row has 108 stitches in it, and that is it for the dark blue. You can take your scissors, fasten off, and you can either take a moment and weave in your tails with your yarn needle, or you can just sort of leave them out and work over top of them, or you can leave them all out until the end and weave them in later. It's entirely up to you. But now you want to grab your brown. We're going to take our brown color and make a slip knot. And we're going to attach it in the top of the very last stitch we made in the row 20. So the last row, that's where our little knot is. We're going to attach our yarn with a slip stitch chain three, and you're going to double crochet in each stitch across. So remember, this first stitch is always accounted for because the chain three counts as a double crochet. I'm going to work over top of my little tails here to weave them in as I go. Double crochet in each stitch all the way across with brown now. You'll still have 108 stitches in each row. Chain three turn at the beginning, or I should say at the end of every row, because each row begins with a chain three, and that counts as a double crochet. And you're going to work 10 rows in total of brown. 10 rows of brown. That is 10 rows of brown. So every single row has 108 stitches in it, and you chain three turn at the end of every row. Chain three counts as a double crochet. So just like the blue section before, you can now snip your yarn and fasten off. You can take a moment to weave in that tail or you can work over top of it. Flip your blanket over, grab your dark green, and now we're going to work the first 10 rows of dark green. 
we're going to take our green yarn, our dark green yarn, we're going to make a slip knot, and we're going to join our dark green yarn in the top of the last stitch we made in the brown section, and I'm going to work over top of my short tails. So we're going to join with a slip stitch, chain three to begin, so three not two, <laughs> chain three, you're going to double crochet in each stitch across, just like we've done for every other row up till this point. When you get to the end of the row, you should have 108 stitches. That includes the chain three at the beginning. Chain three in turn, and you're going to work the exact same row for 10 rows in total so far of the dark green. Do not fasten off when you get to the end of the 10th row because we're not done with the green section. So 10 rows of regular old double crochet back and forth, chain three turn at the end of every row, each row will still have 108 stitches in it, and I'll see you at the end of row 10. That is 10 rows of the dark green. That is the first half of the dark green section. Now we're not finished, so we're not going to fasten off. We're just gonna pull up on that loop. You might wanna grab a safety pin or a stitch marker, slip the working loop over top of it and close it up. This will help keep it from unraveling on you. So we're gonna put the blanket aside and we're gonna pick up a little while later. But this is a handy little technique to use if you're working on a blanket or any kind of project where you need to put it down but you're not finished, you're not fastening off. Just put that little safety pin in your loop so that it won't unravel on you. And that also frees up your hook. So if you need the hook for something else, um, there it is, and your blanket or your other project, whatever you might be working on, won't unravel in the meantime. So there we go. That is the entire dark blue section, the entire brown section, and half the green section complete. So there we go. That's the first two and a half color sections of this year's canvas build for the calendar blanket. Dark blue on the bottom, followed by a strip of brown, and then half of the dark green. So we'll continue with the dark green in the next video, followed by the light green, and then the light blue. I hope you enjoyed working along with me this week as we start the 2019 Folk Art Calendar Blanket. Mr. and Stitches and I are really excited about this year's project, and we hope you will be too. So we will see you here again soon on the Jade and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe. Stay crafty and have an awesome week, everyone. Bye.